Hey everybody, it's Ken Compton from the Savvy Inspector, and I've got Coach William with me, and today we're talking about how to get more business from real estate agents through presentations and events. And this is a killer strategy, and it's the, the focus of our October 2014 workshop. We're going to spend three days on this topic. And I wanted you to get a little taste of what we were going to be talking about. Um, and William and Sherry have become very, very effective with this strategy. As a matter of fact, William and Sherry no longer go to the real estate offices and ask uh, to do events and presentations. The real estate agents call them uh, directly and say, hey, could you do this presentation, this event, that kind of thing. So you know you've made it in your community uh, when they start calling you. So William, welcome to the call, sir. Hey, Ken, it's great to be here and really look forward to, uh, to sharing and expanding on this topic. All right, well listen, let's don't waste any time. Let's just jump right into it uh, and share with us all these kinds of great things. Great, great. Um, again, coming up here uh, for the October workshop, a three-day event. We're gonna get into this really, really deep uh, and detailed. And I tell you, um, you know, I was sharing with you earlier that I'm really surprised um, of the lack of knowledge uh, by other inspection, inspection firms out there of the power of doing these presentations and events. Um, if you're listening in on the call, chances are in your area um, you've had little to none competition if you want to get involved in this. And this just really can open some doors wide uh, to building new relationships and digging deeper with inside of the offices that you may already have uh, some contact with. And we're talking about real estate agents, but this really goes beyond. I mean, you can, lenders, of course, uh, rotary clubs, uh, we just had one for the Knights of Columbus. So these types of people that are affluent, if you will, and looking for folks to, to present. And this, that what we're talking about, covers all aspects, not necessarily just real estate agents, although it's wonderful for that, uh, but it goes beyond that as well. And you know, at the bottom here, where you, say, where you see where I've got how to gain the ripple effect. And what I mean by that is, if you do these properly, uh, and we've learned this over time, um, what you do at these events and presentations can go beyond just the crowd that you, that you presented to. Um, so it's, it's the wow factor that you, that you learn to bring. You don't just show up with your business cards and brochures and wait for people to stroll by to pass those out. It goes beyond just showing up to, for the event, yet being a part of the event is what we're going to talk about. So, um, so we'll get into this, and Ken, please chime in as you, um, as you see fit. I want to just say one thing, William. You know, all the times I go to special events or uh, uh, make presentations and you see other home inspectors there, um, nobody's lining up to talk with them, and they don't know what to say. And, and when you come to this workshop, we're going to teach you all this thing. You're going to get a, a Ph.D. in presentations and events uh, in three days. Um, right. you, can, you can throw away everything you know and uh, implement these strategies that we're going to teach you here at the workshop, and you'll be, uh, you'll be awesome at this. Uh, you'll, you'll get a ton more business from agents. And that's what, that's what we're really going to try to focus on and teach is, is you know, how to leave an impression to be remembered you know, when your services are needed in the future. Um, these guys that just show up and stand there with their you know, uniforms on and pass out their cards and what have you, um, they don't, they don't uh, have a line, if you will, waiting to get to their booths. When we go to one of these presentations, uh, we have a good time with it. It's entertaining uh, and informative, and, and people remember us long after the event is over. So I mean, they're um, still talking about you and inviting you back to the next one because the last one you did was so much fun. That's right. You know, we used to spend a lot of time begging and pleading, if you will, knocking on doors um, to get in. And now it's at the point where about this time of year, um, we'll start getting the call because, you know, the summer's over and, and we come into the slower season and agents kind of come back into the office, if you will. So, uh, so we get asked then to come in and do some of these presentations. And we shoot out um, some info uh, online and through emails and what have you, which we're going to teach that as well, um, to get your foot in the door to start with uh, to make this happen. So... Um, so again, you know, um, just a lot of power, power in this. And the main thing is that whether you're, whether you're doing a, a five to ten minute speech at a staff meeting or if you have what we call a lunch and learn that's a 45 minute uh, to an hour presentation, when you're up there doing that presentation, you are perceived as the expert in that topic, even if it's not your material that you're presenting. Hey, most of what I'm presenting comes from Ken Compton and the Savvy, um, but I get the credit for that because I'm the one up there speaking. And we're at the workshop, and throw that in there before I forget, when you walk away from the workshop in October, you're going to have a handful uh, of these PowerPoints ready to present. You just need to tweak them to your own, customize them for yourself, um, so that you're not going to have to go out and reinvent the wheel. Heck, how, how do I make a PowerPoint? Uh, we're going we're to hand that to you. So, um, and William, I want to I just make sure that everybody uh, understands that completely. When We've got PowerPoints that are ready for you. All you have to do, like William said, is tweak them. Take our information out, put your logo in and your phone number in. I mean, we're going to give you these things on a memory stick. 
Uh, and when you leave, you have all these presentations ready. It's not like you've got to go back home and think, gosh, what am I going to put together? Because that's the hard part, isn't it, William? Getting all your presentations ready. It is, you know. We And now, um, over time, we've got, you know, over 20 of these now that we do. And when you, when you pick a new topic and you're going to present a, a PowerPoint, you would be surprised at the amount of research um, that you end up doing just to come up with the, with those PowerPoints. So, um, so this works done for you. Um, I wish I wish I'd have had this ten years ago. Somebody would have handed these to me. I wish I'd have had it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think it'll be a real plus for anybody that, that that comes to the workshop. I think the value of what the cost of the workshop you'll have just in PowerPoints. You alone. got it. So, well, let's um, talk so. about some of your bullet points here because these are really awesome things that we're going to be teaching skill sets they need. Right. And again, I kind of touched on the first one there is, you know, being that trusted expert. And I'll tell you, that goes to the point so far as, you know, I have agents that call me now and they're out showing a property and they run into something funny or question or how would, it, how would this show up on a, on a report. I get those calls from those agents. Um, you know, that alone says that you, know, you did your, jo your job when you're doing these presentations. So uh, right. to be perceived as the expert, it's just a lot of value in that. Um, gain exposure to new referral sources. So let's say, because um, this has happened for us, you know, I'm working with five or six agents out of a, of a pretty good size office, and these are top producers, and you're trying to drill deeper to get into that office. Um, you know, you don't want to uh, expand out. You want to stay in your area and get as much as you can. So when you do these presentations in the office, you know, besides that five or six that already use you, if it's an office presentation like that, especially if you're doing a lunch and learn, heck, you know, you're supplying free food, and in some cases, CE credits. So, um, so you get a packed house from this real estate agency, and you get yourself exposed to all of these other uh, real estate agents in there that before you were, you know, just trying to uh, do other tactics to to get a, to use you. So, again, when you're the expert like that, um, you know, it's a much much easier to pick up those new referral sources. Um, and build those new relationships. What I mean by that is you're in there, you're doing a presentation, whatever the topic may be, mold right on, um, and you know, there's, there are questions asked, and you get to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. That is building relationships. Right. And uh, solidifying existing relationships. What I mean by that is, again, you've got the four or five agents that, you, that use you all the time, but when you talk to them, what are you talking about? You're talking about the inspection that you just did. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of your conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you can break away from that when you get into doing these presentations because now you're not just talking about the inspection that you just did or the one that's coming up. You're talking about a topic that's related to educating them, um, and it just really, really solidifies that that relationship beyond the you know, um, give me my inspection report. And so right. uh, not a power in that. Um, and then the last bullet I just throw in there because you know sometimes. Um, you've got some agents, uh, some companies. We've got a Keller Williams office here that just uses us. I mean, they're they're my number one top producing uh, agency. Um, if they are referring others, it's it's very very few. We get a lot of work out of that office. So any time that I've got the opportunity to say thank you, um, we take advantage of that. And that goes beyond just presentations. We uh, um, they just had a, a continuing education class across the river in Louisville, and heck, we, we bought the bus for them and, and shipped them over there just to say thank you. And we rode with them and had a great time, but uh, we're always in there doing some type of presentation. As a matter of fact, once a month, we go in and teach their new agents what a home inspection isn't is the name of that presentation. So really, really um, can show, you know, give a big thank you, and they really appreciate it. Um, so that kind of covers those bullets, but I just can't say enough about being able to build those relationships. Um, and then back to the presentations again, we want to show you how to avoid just being another pretty face in the crowd. Um, the big trick is to be interesting, be interactive, and be entertaining, um, and educating, you know, educating them as well. So, um, and we're going to get in depth on how you can go about doing that. Um, and again, I said earlier, you know, realtors, of course, is what we're talking about here, but lenders, your chamber of commerce, rotary clubs, insurance agencies, any kind of group like that, especially of affluent people, um, are usually looking for help, if you will, uh, for someone to give a good presentation. So um, there are a lot of opportunities for us out there to, to open doors. And you know, William, I say this isn't sales. This is education-based marketing. This is education-based marketing. And when you look at the things that we're talking about, it's helping people. It's helping the real estate agents. So this, especially when you do the lunch and learns and the other things we're talking about, it, this is education-based marketing, and it's easy and fun. You bet. And, and it gets the word out, you know, and especially if you're dealing with those types of folks. Again, those are the affluent, typically. 
um, and that's the crowd, of course, that we want. So right. um, if you can establish yourself there, um, it's, it's just another feather in your hat. Um, let's see what else have I got here. Uh, office lunch and learners, we kind of touched on that already, but that's, uh, I guess, um, I just always assumed that that's what it was all about, doing these presentations, that you would have at least a 30 or 40 minute uh, PowerPoint. I found out after the, after the fact, after we've been doing this for a year or so, that the most common thing is these guys come in and speak for two to three minutes. Um, you know, thank you, goodbye, and just introduce who they are. So, um, so we really turn the coin, if you will, in these lunch and learners. We bring in lunch, uh, we give away a ton of prizes, collect their business cards so we can contact them later. Um, and then and then give some really informative presentations that are not boring. You know, that's the right. big thing. When most most uh, real estate agents think they're going to sit through a, a presentation with a with a, with a home inspector, they're dreading that. You know, they they know it's going to be something boring, and they'd real, really rather not be there. So right. these powerpoints are not that way. Uh, they're meant to be interactive. They're funny, um, and there's always prizes being given away. So it keeps them on the edge of their seat, and then we get asked to come back because of that. So, um, but I would even say, um, you know. Even if you do have that that little five or ten minute speech that they give you to introduce yourself, there are some things that you can do there as well uh, to establish yourself as that expert in that little bit of time that you've got. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on that here in a second. But though, even those little short meetings have a lot of power packed into them, and I would not turn down an opportunity um, to give any length of a speech, be it two minutes or ten. Right. Um, office parties and events, we're always looking for that. Uh, you know, these, these uh, real estate agencies are always having, you know, realtor of the month or um, birthday parties or some kind of crazy event, especially this Keller Williams office I'm talking about. They think outside the box all the time. So we love to be a part of that, especially if they're a themed type event um, where you can come in costume or decorate your booth or your table. Um, can, you can really get involved with those. Um, association CE classes, if you can get approved for uh, state CE, um, that's a big plus. We, we have our approval for Kentucky, um, and we're working on the Indiana side. There's some hoops that you have to jump through to make that happen, um, but it can be done. So now, um, not are you only offering a great lunch and all kinds of surprises and informative information for them to walk away with, but hey, they can get three hours of CE credits for coming to your, to your event. So, uh, and, and we can do that in-house and all that stuff. A lot of agency. <coughs> Fight the cold. I'll tell you, both of us are the cold. Yeah. Um, Association of Affiliation Expo. I'm sure everybody's used to those. We've got uh, GLAR, that's the Greater Louisville Association of Realtors, and then SADRA is the uh, Southern Indiana Realtors Association. Once a year, they put on big affiliate expos, and that's a great opportunity to cut yourself away from the rest of the crowd. Um, and we'll be teaching this at the workshop. In fact, uh, Ken's got us talked into doing this live in the workshop um, all three days. So, uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And let's talk about that for a minute, William, because you know what happens is we can show you a PowerPoint of the strategy, and that's all cool. But if we if we do a mock event right there, guess what happens? You get to be a part of it. Uh, you see how it works. You see how it's set up. You see what we do before, during, and after. I mean, it, I, I just think if you learn the strategy here live from us, it's a lot better. Sure, is it a lot more work on our part? Absolutely it is, but who cares? Um, you know, our goal is to have you walk out of here um, with a PhD in events and presentations. And so I think it'll enhance it and I think it'll be more fun. Uh, you can get up from your seat and be a participant. And uh, I, I just love it. I think it's going to be awesome. It will be. And, you know, we, uh, of all the things that we do, we have a ton of fun with our marketing, period. <laughs> but when we go to these events and what have you, we just, we just have a ball. We look forward to it. Um, the before, during, and after, we'll talk about that as well, getting the marketing done right, but of all the things that we do with running our business, um, doing those kind of uh, expos are our most fun. Um, local ro realtor board meetings, um, I don't know about in your area, but where we are, there are several. Um, the counties are kind of busted up, so we've got four or five different uh, realtor board of realtors in our local area. They're always looking for a speaker, and I've had the privilege of speaking at almost every one of those. So. And, and then uh, being asked to come back. And you get exposed to a lot of new, a lot of new um, realtors. Uh, the one locally here uh, just expanded and picked up a couple of other county, counties. So even areas that I really don't market to, we're getting some business out of just from doing those, those board meetings. Right. Um, and then it goes on and on. I've got some lists here at the bottom. Grand openings, we've done that for both um, real estate offices and for uh, local builders who open um, sections of their subdivisions that they're building. 
uh, tailgate parties this time of year, all kinds of award programs that they do, any kind of holiday, seminars, of course. This is the time of year for fall festivals. We've got a couple of those lined up already. I mentioned birthday parties, any kind of seminars that they're putting on, um, anniversaries. The, the grand opening that I spoke of, um, we did the grand opening. Guess what? It's our one-year anniversary. We got invited back to do that as well. So, um, again, if you can get your foot in the door and leave a good impression, um, they will be calling you because they're looking for folks to do this. Um, and then a lot of people, you know, I get, I get the question all the time, how in the heck do you get in the door? Yep. Um, and I spent most of my time yesterday and last night preparing for the workshop, just this section. Um, and we do a ton of different things, but we do use direct mail. And when I say direct mail, um, I don't mean just a plain white envelope. Um, this is, there's some tricks to this and strategies to make this happen. We're going to share that with you. Um, we use Facebook a lot. And we'll talk about uh, making videos. We're going to make some videos while we're there. We'll talk about that here in a second. But we'll use Facebook that way. Um, while we're at the event, we'll, we'll take a ton of pictures to create videos with and then later follow up with that. So like this year, now when I'm, I'm ready to start um, scheduling these again, and I've got one that we just scheduled for uh, Keller Williams, then I will post on Facebook the video that I did from last year's event so everybody can see how much fun we had just trying to boost or promote that. Um, we even embed those videos in email. We'll show you how to do that as well and send those out. And then, of course, just the emails that were asked um, about, about, um, about getting in to do these presentations. And it's all about explaining to them the value that you can bring to the table. And once they see the value that you understand how the system works, um, you, you can get your foot in the door. Um, phone messaging is another great way. Um, just picking up the phone and calling somebody has a lot of weight to it. Um, and then there's a, a system out there called SlideOut. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and that's just a way to go direct to voicemail without having to talk to anybody. Um, face to face, you know, when you're out there doing inspections, talk to the, talk to the real estate agents about. Let, let them know that you'd like to come in and do a presentation. And and who who might you who might you contact to, to make that happen? And then when they give you that contact information, ask them if it's okay that you say that you know they recommend that you that you suggested that they talk that you talk to them. Just little things like that to help get your get yourself in the door. Um, our scheduler, when she's scheduling, if it's a new agent or a new office that we haven't had the opportunity to get into, you know, um, are you aware that we do these um, that we do these presentations? We bring lunch in for everybody and um, give away prizes and have good information. And people will warm up to that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, here using surveys, we um, we do a lot of surveys uh, on our agents. And one of the questions that we have embedded in the survey is. Would you like to have us come and present in your office? Yes or no? And, uh, and so then we can take that survey and say, hey, Sally sells and watch this. She'd like to see us come in and do a presentation. Here's what it's all about. Um, you can send that to the broker or to the um, marketing director and get your foot in the door. And William, I know that we're going to teach some um, some ways to make this happen, even that aren't on these bullet points, because that's the number one question you and I get all the time in coaching home inspectors all across the country. How do I get into these events? So we're going to spend tons and tons of time in here uh, on this section, and there's all kind of little sub strategies that go in here that we'll teach. I don't want to say tricks, but ways to get yourself invited more and more. Um, so this will be a, this will be an information packed section of the uh, of the training as well. It will, and, and I'm telling you, each one of these in their self will work. When you start combining them together, it's a pretty fail-safe system. Yes, it is. Um, and then being prepared for these uh, for these presentations, uh, Sherry sat down and made a nice little list of 20 things you should do to set up and be prepared. Uh, so everybody will walk away with that as well. And William, this uh, isn't a theoretical thing. This comes from these 20 things come from us doing hundreds and hundreds of these events. Uh, over the years. When things work great, we make note of it. When things don't work so well, we make note of it. Uh, we call it kind of a post-mortem of each event and presentation we do. And these are, you you do these 20 things, you're going to be super sharp. And that's right. I would say that about these PowerPoints too when folks walk away because you know, Ken, how we've uh, shared marketing material in the past that has been proven and um, the inspector thinks they need to tweak it uh, and change it. I will say that these PowerPoints that you walk away with have been tweaked. They have been changed um, to be what they are today. So to, to go in there and, 
and mess these up, if you will, or change them, um, might not be the best idea. It'd be a, it'd be a marketing mistake. Just take our company's name out, put your company's name in, our phone number out, your phone number in. Uh, William alluded to it a minute ago. Uh, we write direct mail marketing pieces for our clients, and we test those at the Savvy Inspector through Williams Firm and others. And one of the things that happens is when we get it right through testing, uh, then we turn it over to the members. But when they change it, they don't get the same results. And it's the same thing about the PowerPoints. You start making changes on the PowerPoints, they won't be as effective. So just change our name, put your name in, and, and go with the flow. Excellent. And, you know, overcoming the fear of public speaking, that's a huge, <laughs> huge uh, problem. Um, and I, you know, I've explained this before, but myself, I spent uh, several years touring as a drummer in a band. Um, I had no fear whatsoever of getting in front of thousands of people and doing my thing. Um, so for me to get up and do public speaking in front of, you know, 30 real estate agents should be a no-brainer. Not the case. I, I thought so. Uh, but when I walked up there the very first time, my knees were knocking and, and the toe, my, my heart beating in my toes, and uh, and it was a real eye opener. So it is something that, that needs to be overcome. Um, you know, I'm at the point now after after you do three or four of these, uh, you become quite comfortable. I'm at the point now that I, I, it, I just it just doesn't bother. Me. It's a, it's a second thought now. Right. Um, but it is something to overcome, and uh, there are some tricks and some things that you can learn. To help overcome that, you know, number one is nobody knows you're nervous except you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you know you're always the subject matter expert, but you don't really think that. I actually saw a study not long back that said people uh, feared dying less than speaking in public. <laughs> I'm like, heard really? That I've been doing it so many years, I, I never even think about it. Just show me to the stage. Right. But I, I have heard that before. But, you know, again, once you once you do a few of these, and there's some tricks that we'll share that will help you get the right mindset, and, and it won't eliminate the fear because it, it's going to be there. And sometimes it still is. When I first get up there, um, you know, I, I get it just a little, but I bet it goes away. And um, so you do have to overcome that. And But, but it, does not, it does not need to stop you. Anybody can be a speaker. I will tell you, um, William, uh, just a little story uh, quickly. Um, I was asked to speak at a big event uh, of a lot of real estate agents in a new subdivision. The builder had a meeting and um, invited lots of real estate agents, and so they invited the home inspector to speak. And I got up and did a, a quick presentation, six, seven minutes. And when I got finished, the, uh, the builder and the broker looked at me and said, damn, a home inspector that can actually speak. Um, <laughs> so what that really tells you is not many people are that good at this. So when you gain these skill sets, you're really going to be a cut above the crowd. Um, and we've got proven strategies to teach you here to overcome that fear. Listen, years ago, I might have had some butterflies today. I'm just like, you know, ready, set, speak. You know, you'll get that right. way too, doing it more and more. Right. Um, and it is, again, but it is something that needs to be addressed because I know that's the, I think that's probably the number one stopper for most folks. Oh, I just couldn't do that. Right. You, you can do that. Right. Um, and a lot of it is the next bullet point right there, how to, how to open the presentation. Um, that, that really helped me tremendously. Once you had the first, oh, five minutes of your speech down and what you were going to say where it just kind of fell out of your mouth without thinking, um, <laughs> once you got past that point, everything was pretty smooth. So, uh, so we're going to share that as, a, as well. Um, you know, that, of course, includes thanking the broker or whoever invited you and those kind of things. And just opening that and setting, setting the uh, atmosphere for the room. Um, another big one that everybody's afraid of, what if you got some guy in the back that starts heckling you or... You know, you get that awkward question, maybe about an inspection that you had done, or um, I've had it happen to me where I'm talking about something in a presentation, and and they would um, holler out in the background, "Well, that's not what you did when you were on my inspection," you know. <laughs> so, uh, so how to handle those folks? Um, I get very, very little of that, right? Uh, but uh, be prepared for it, right? Um, so preparing the room is really, really important before, before folks get in there. You want to make sure you get that room staged the way you want it, not just for the preparation or for the presentation itself, but for your marketing that's going to take place afterwards. Right. Um, and I'll just touch on that a little. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a room that seats uh, 50 people and you've only got five people that show up, we don't want to take pictures of, a, of, a, of an empty room. So trying to get those people in one spot so that the shots that you take it appears that you have, um, or at least wise it doesn't show that, that you know nobody showed up. So just little things like that. Um, and this is one of my favorites, uh, seating the meeting. I almost touched on this a while ago. Um, we use this a lot, almost everywhere, but especially when you've got that two-minute speech. You know, they've invited you up to introduce yourself, and 
took your money, sponsoring, and that's all you get. So if you can go through your little two to five minute speak and be an expert in that, and then seed the meeting. And what we mean by that is have a real estate agent out there that has used you in the past that knows, likes, trusts you, and just touch base with them before the meeting. Hey, are you gonna are you gonna attend tomorrow's meeting? Yeah, I plan on being there. Would you mind if I called on you and you said a few kind words about us? They'll do that, no problem. Um, so you get your two to five minutes that they gave you and then say, you know, I um, I know it's, it's a lot more powerful to have somebody else talk about how great we are versus me up here trying to tell you. So call on that agent then and ask them to explain why they'd like to use you. And then you just bought yourself another five minutes of somebody else blowing your horn. And, you know, there are specific ways that we're going to teach you the workshop to how to make this happen. Um, and, 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 I mean, we're really going to get in. This is a powerful strategy, but if you do it wrong... Um, yeah, it doesn't really work too well. So we're going to really get into all the details at the workshop on it. Um, so, but it is a, it's a very powerful strategy, a very powerful strategy. One of the things I want you to do is be sure and ask William about um, uh, how he worked with the builders in a new subdivision. That, that's a fabulous story. I know we're going to teach it, but um, that, that's just a really good one. Find out how he got involved in it. So, and I think, William, here's one, the next one that people really underestimate, don't they? The serving of food and drinks, yeah. I, just, I mean, they you know, have food and drinks, but... Mm. Yeah, um, you know, it says a lot about you, uh, what you bring to the event. And um, I'll just throw it right out there. Pizza is not what you want to bring. I really um, value you so much. I think this is such a special presentation. I'm going to bring a pizza. <laughs> Ooh, what does that say? I don't really value at all. I have no imagination, no creativity. Do you really want to be here? Exactly. I mean, come on. Uh, I was just at a broker's open yesterday uh, for for a home that you know, they were showing, and and they had catered in. I believe um, maybe Lulu's the name of the catering or whatever, but it's upscale and it was very pricey and uh, but very very good. And it just said a lot about you know you wouldn't want this was a this was a nine hundred thousand dollar home. You wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to serve pizza. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a nine hundred thousand dollar home. We can upgrade to Subway. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you know, one of the things about it is you, when you're doing events, it's about the whole experience. It's the whole experience. It's the presentation. It's you. It's the food. And, you know, at the Savvy Inspector, and William knows this, Lord knows he's uh, been to every event we've had, but um, and now he's teaching in the events. But one of the things I want you uh, to have when you come here is a great experience. And so we serve fabulous food from our caterers. Um, we have a big tent in the back. William, Lord knows there's some networking going on there. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a reception each evening. Um, and and um, you can come out and have a beverage of your choice, top shelf, uh, and, on me and William. And what happens is um, it's about that experience. Um, so, so don't shortchange yourself. We're going to get into what the do's and don'ts of that whole thing. Exactly. Now, one plus that we've got is, a, and I'll just give that away, you know, Sherry, uh, my wife, does a lot of cooking. And uh, Grandma, you know, makes pies and cakes and that kind of stuff. So if you've got somebody that can do the homemade um, ordeal that's just it's, it's a hassle but um, it speaks volumes and people will come just to get a piece of that pie <laughs> I, I'm always trying to get some of grandma's goodies yeah so uh, prizes and giveaways again kind of the same deal you know um, it depends on how you're how you're doing this but say you um, say you're um, and some of these PowerPoints do have questions embedded in the PowerPoint to keep to keep the agents interactive so those prizes that you might pass out for somebody getting the correct answer could be gimmick type things, um, laughs, you know, something to get a laugh. Uh, but the prizes that come out of the drawings um, for the for the grand prize, or if you're going to have one at each session that you do, if it's a two or three hour thing, if you're doing CE, those need to be of some value. Um, you can't just be giving away cheap made in China stuff because uh, again, it reflects back on you. Um, and then the giveaways, what I mean by that is the things that you maybe would have just sitting on the table uh, that go with your card and brochure, they're going to walk away with as well. Again, you just don't want to have cheap, you know, made in China uh, toys. Trinkets. Yeah. And, and it, it, again, it's just, this is about the experience that they have. And when they walk away, they think, wow, not only did I learn a lot, but what, this, this whole thing was dynamite. And so what do they say to their friends? Listen, you know, if you need CE or you need education of whatever type, lunch and learn, go see these guys. They're awesome. I'm gonna have gonna have fun with it. Um, and this next slide talks about some of the most important things about this, and that's the marketing before the event, during the event, and what I mean by that is really getting the marketing together, and then marketing after the event. And this is where a lot of the ripple effect comes in. Um, again, we use direct mail pieces 
to send out before um, and then uh, and then after. And just on the after part, um, say say we do a video at the event or whatever, whatever we may do, and we're going to send that out um, to the folks that attended, but not just them. If you're doing this in a Remax office and you had 10 out of the 100 agents show up, all 100 agents are going to get this follow-up email after the event or video or whatever it is, just so you can drive it home that look what you missed by not being there. Right. And that that's really helped build uh, build you know our attendance up. Um, and I don't have it in uh, these slides here, but excuse me. <coughs> um, but you know, a lot of times brokering or uh, partnering with a broker uh, to help fill seats in these presentations is another thing that we'll really share here at the workshop and how you can do that and give away some really nice stuff if you got you know, the more people involved um, the nicer the price can be. And you think about it, the broker uh, wants the agents to come and they want them to get the education that we're presenting. Um, so uh, we're going to be teaching a great strategy on how to do it. We're not going to share it here, but uh, we'll be teaching that at the workshop, how to do it, uh, how we've done it successfully, uh, how it worked, um, things that we might change about it, but you know, it's, it's very powerful. Um, using Facebook posts, I can't say enough about that. We, we burn that up and do get and have gotten, um, you know, um, some of these presentations booked because of the Facebook Facebook posts that we do where we have, you know, presented at another office and some of these other brokers or marketing directors see that on Facebook and um, watch the video, if you will, or whatever, and, uh, and we get the call, get invited. We've had that happen a couple of times. So, there is a lot of power in the social media. And, you know, we shared yesterday in a presentation for our members that if you have a photo or a video in a post on social media, um, you get a 650% increase over just plain text. And so That's these are great crazy. photos and videos that we're making at the events. Um, so you, you're getting a lot more open and a lot more interaction with your posts. Um, now you showed those statistics yesterday. I like to fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe that. Six hundred fifty percent. Right. Well, you know, when our team posts anything in social media for our clients, our home inspector clients, uh, you'll see we always use graphics. I mean, we have a big graphics budget uh, just for that reason because you get way more engagement. Right. Right. Um, and again, crafting the email campaigns. It's not just throwing some words in text and, and sending out the emails. These are, these are nice, nicely done campaigns. We'll share share with you how to put those together and get those out. Phone messaging, we kind of touched on it earlier there, but again, there's a lot of power. Nobody picks up the phone anymore. They don't. Um, so picking up the phone and talking to somebody says a lot. Uh, and if you don't even want to do that, just leaving the voicemail uh, without talking to them, um, there's a way to do that, and that's, that's powerful as well. And, you know, I think what happens, William, uh, again, we, you have to craft the right message. Um, whether you talk to them in person or you ha leave them a voicemail, however you're going to do it, if you don't have the right message, it's not as effective. And we're going to teach you how to get the right message to that person. Um, even when you're talking face to face, if you're not, if you don't have the message uh, correct, then you know you fall on deaf ears. Talk to the hand because the man ain't listening. So we're going to teach you how to get that message. Uh, you know to show them what's in it for them uh, by exactly. allowing us to do their presentation and event. And once you craft that message, you'll get it. The light bulb will come on for you. Yeah, that's the big trick. You know they've got to know what's in it for them. It right. can't be about you. So. Um, so that's that's powerful. Face to face again, the same same philosophy as I shared a while ago. Just getting that word out there and and, um, and talking to folks one on one. Uh, office intranets. I think that's another avenue that's that's uh, overlooked by a lot of a lot of inspection firms. Uh, we've got a Remax and a Keller Williams office that have the intranet, and they'll post flyers on there for us. They'll broadcast that we're giving you know, the events coming up or after the event, the marketing material that we do. So that's a powerful tool um, because those agents are checking that internet. Right. Uh, and then again, getting the right pictures. We kind of touched on that earlier uh, as well. You can't, you know, you really don't want to take pictures that's, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. So make sure you've got the right words in the picture. And, uh, and we'll, we'll teach you how to do that as well. And then creating videos. This is a ton of fun. Uh, we will be teaching that as well. Everybody will be required to, um, to take photos while we're at the event, and we're going to craft these together to make some really killer videos. So I just want to make sure that they understand this, William. We're going to do mock events, okay? And you're going to be taking photos as if you were doing the event yourself, okay? And so then what happens is right there at the workshop, we're going to make the videos. And when we're finished making the videos, you'll have these skill sets that you need so that when you go back home, you'll, you can implement. But if we don't do it here and you just go back home, guess what happens? You won't do it. 
And that's not what we're about. We're about getting it done here so that you have the skill sets when you leave here. Okay, we only allow 40 people in the event. Um, so the fact of the matter is we have a small group and all of the coaches are in the, uh, in the workshop, the training center uh, here at, uh, at the Savvy and we're helping you one on one. We go right around the desk, raise your hand if you need help. We go right to that desk, that desk, that desk, and we get everybody's problem solved or roadblock knocked out of the way. So you got these skills when you leave and that's what I love about this. Yeah. No inspector left behind. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I've just gotten tons of compliments from the folks that have attended just to, you know, in the past, we always had one big workshop was just information overload and people come back and yet, you know, life goes on and that stuff gets put on the shelf and never implemented. And, and with these workshops, like Kim said, when you walk out of there, um, shame on you if you don't put it in place because you've got all the tools and everything together to, to make this happen. So. And I'll tell you, William, the, we do ask for feedback. What could we do better? What could we do, uh, uh, you know, what did we do good? And, uh, you know, how would you change it? And the reviews have just been awesome. And all of them reflect that they can now go home and do this. Right. Yeah, powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see, we'll move on here. Okay, topics, that's, you know, again, what, what PowerPoints would you want to present? Um, a lot of people struggle with what, what would be a good topic. And I can tell you that if you look at the very bottom bullet right there, you know, your radon, termite, mode, lead, any inspector can come up with that stuff. And that's what agents expect. Um, not that you don't want to do those, you do have to do them, but you need to do them correctly. And, and make them interactive and, and fun um, than just standing up there boring people to death. But beyond those, the ones that really hit home with these agents, it's right back to the what's in it for them. If you can bring in information that can educate them on how they can help them grow their business, um, you know, you, you become the preferred uh, presenter. Um, so we're going to share all of that kind of stuff with you. The very first bullet at the top there, your company intro, if you've never been into an office before, and it's your first time in doing a presentation. This would probably want. This would probably be the PowerPoint that you'd want to do. Just introduces your company. Uh, why are you different from the other folks that are out there? We're going to give that to you. We'll see a sample of that one here in just a second. Uh, but you'll walk away with that PowerPoint. Uh, marketing for realtors, direct response marketing. Um, this one is about a I'm going to say 40, 45 minute presentation. It normally goes over an hour because the agents are into this. They understand what's in it for them to do these things and, and you get a lot of questions and interaction with them um, with that PowerPoint. Um, yeah, William, I said a minute ago, oops, yes, sorry. I said a minute ago, um, what we provide is education-based marketing. I mean, and that's what this is about. This is education-based marketing and, and they love it. Now, you can make termite funny, um, you know, lead, mold, not so much radon. There's a couple of good videos you could include in there that makes it good. But like William said, you know, this is what home inspectors do, those. But these that we're talking about above are the ones that are just knocking real estate agents out and getting us invited back over and over. You bet. And, and even with the radon, uh, I've got a hilarious video yes, that starts that, that uh, presentation out. So, you know, who wants to hear about radon? Uh, but when they when you open up the PowerPoint with that with that cartoon video, um, you've got their attention. Right. Even with termites, I've got I've got a video in there where um, I don't know if you know it or not, but termites, the, the pheromones that they put off are identical to um, paper mate pen ink, and so <laughs> this guy draws paper. He takes a paper mate pen and draws a line on the paper and drops these termites on there. And dang, if they don't just follow that complete squiggly little trail that he that he made, so stuff like that. Uh, yeah, good stuff. You know, mold, mold was in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Um, who, knew, who knew that? So, so that, there are ways to make them interesting. Um, back, back on topic here. When things go wrong, that's a very, inform <laughs> that's a very informative uh, PowerPoint because things go wrong and, uh, and how are you gonna address that? And if, you, and if you can let the agents know that you have a system procedure in place and that's what this PowerPoint's about, um, you know, it just kind of takes the ease, it eases their mind. And you know, William, I think one of the biggest things that I, I think one of the things that most home inspectors dread or hate the most, and that's these callbacks. Um, nobody wants callbacks, but we can educate realtors through this PowerPoint on what to do and how to do it in the event things go wrong. And when they've had this training up front, um, things go way better. Okay, so um, th this is a killer good PowerPoint. I, I, this is one I really love. Uh, realtor marketing tips. Ken has an abundance of things on the Savvy site. Uh, all we do is we'll, we'll take it, download it, break the paragraphs apart into PowerPoints, and and these are these are perfect for your, you know, uh, twenty minute or less 
uh, presentations that you get to do. Right. Because they're all about they're all about how to help that agent build their business. So they love those nice short sweet powerpoints. Um, preparing for the inspection, how to how to make sure the seller is prepared and your buyer is prepared. Um, you know they, they really like that one. Uh, what an inspection isn't. That's been a that's been a big hit for us. Matter of fact, it's part of our training for one of the one of the local offices here. Um, and instead of instead of like all the other um, inspectors that come in and we do this, we do that. And we're the greatest because of this talks about what inspectors really aren't allowed to do. Uh, so it's kind of an eye opener. Um, realtor referral liability. Uh, do you know who you're referring? Yeah, you got three names on the list, but do you know anything about them and why you should? You know, there's right. been some legal issues over that. Uh, seven tips for first-time home buyers. That's a good one, even for lenders. Um, they do a lot of first-time home buyer seminars as well. We got one uh, coming up um, next week. And pre-listing inspections. A lot of agents just don't get it. They. I tell you the thing with pre-listing inspections. What most agents think is. Now you've told me all this stuff, and so now I'm liable and have to, um, you know, disclose that to any potential buyer. Um, so this this PowerPoint kind of helps turn that around. Uh, the advantages of, of doing a pre-listing and really is it ethically correct to let them know everything that you can about the home. Um, so, so that's a, that's an hour and a good one. Uh, top ten most common findings, and this is a good one to help agents when they're out showing homes. And they walk around the corner of the house, and there's a downspout dumped right at the foundation, and the water is pulling backwards. Um, after this, after this slideshow, they'll know what to say to that potential buyer, and it might just be something as simple as, you know, watch that. That's going to show up on the home inspection report. Right. And just because they made that comment, when it does show up on the home inspection report, the element of surprise is gone, and the buyer might say, "Oh, heck, I knew that was coming." You know, maybe you told me that'd be on there instead of instead of it being, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. Uh, you know, just things like that. So, topics, there's plenty of them, and we're going to share a lot of them with you. You're going to take them home with you. You sure are. Uh, here's just a sample of the, the, the one that I spoke of that would be your company intro. Again, this has been proven uh, to be very effective. You would have the first slide, of course, would not be this. It would be your uh, picture of your company logo and your some testimonials up there and your phone number and all that good stuff. And then you'd bust right into the slide. And it starts right here with, I know, I know, nobody likes the home inspector. So, now you... Now they're kind of eyes open, perked up. What's this guy talking about? And why? Because 85% of inspectors out there can be complete idiots. I mean, we hate stupid home inspectors. And when you say that, um, you know, Ken, they just, uh, <laughs> you've immediately got their attention. Their arms drop from being folded across their chest, and, and, they're, and they're on the edge of their chair. And William, let's think about it for a minute. I know some people might be offended by that statement, but don't be, because you know why? Um, every real estate agent has experienced a home inspector that could care less about them. Uh, you think about, let's walk a minute in the real estate agent shoes. They uh, they were uh, engaged in lead generation strategies and they got the client in their marketing funnel. Okay, so what happens is they show them 100 houses, they've jumped through all of the hurdles to get them financed, they got them to the home inspection, and the home inspector comes out there and, and kills the deal unnecessarily or says stupid things. I mean, we had a, a real estate agent just shared with me the other day that a home inspector, uh, a Southern Home, our company didn't do it. And what happened was the, the inspector said to the client, babe, you need to go in there and check those appliances because they're outside the scope of the home inspection. Now, the realtor went nuts. I mean, you know, really? So these are the kinds of things that realtors want to avoid. We understand there's good and bad in every profession. Um, there's, there's good home inspectors. There's some that are less good. There's good real estate agents, some that are less good. So we want to deal with professional real estate agents. And they're frustrated with home inspectors uh, in many cases because they've had to deal with them saying and doing things that were unnecessary. And it actually has caused disruption in the transaction. Um, so that's why we say this, because the real estate agents are already feeling this way. Um, this is what we call a message to market match. And we'll teach you how to do all this. We actually right. did it for you. We're just going to teach you why we did it. Exactly. And why you wouldn't want to switch up the slides. You know, that's, that's exactly. the big thing. <laughs> uh, but they do. They, they get it that, you know, it's, it's, not, that, it's not that you're uh, a stupid home inspector is the guy that misses major things, although that would be one way to be stupid. But it's that they say these stupid things. And, um, and we hear it all the time. Like I said, we send out these surveys and you would not believe some of the stuff that home inspectors say that's just way outside of the scope of why they're there in the first place. I mean, we go in there in, in sales meetings and we'll talk to you about the strategy and the, the agents will have their arms crossed and their body language says, I'm not listening to a thing you say. So we're going to teach you a strategy so that they'll drop those arms and the fact of the matter is they'll listen to what you have to say because you feel their pain and you're going to let them know it. 
and you're going to let them know that you're different. Yeah, you're, you're going to do a quality inspection so there's no callbacks, but you're not going to be scary. You don't have to be scary. Nowhere in the standards of practice do I see anything about being scary. Well, I don't know, William, maybe I missed it. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the point. You know, they, they know that, you know, you just got to let them know that that's what's different about you. You get it. You know they've worked really hard to get their client to this point. And for somebody to come in here and say something stupid, like, I don't know why you buy this house. There's much cheaper houses, you know, much nicer houses for less money. I mean, and we why just, we just got that? that, didn't we? We just, just got that from a realtor. That's crazy. what the home inspector said. So, um, you know, so why should, so we're not, we're not going to do that. Sure, the house is still the house, which means we have to report what we see, but we get it. And there are two places that you don't want to hear OMG, and that's during brain surgery and a home inspection. They're going to giggle. Um, and laugh and be surprised that you said that um, and you've got their full attention and, and a little respect. So, you know, stupid comments and unprofessional behavior that unnecessarily scaring your client. I mean, look <laughs> at this picture. These graphics are just funny. Um, so, so they're not bored. They're waiting to see what the heck the next slide's going to say or show. That's right. And, and I want to say this, William. Remember when you said in the beginning, if you're boring, guess what happens is you're, going to get not, you're not going to get asked back. That's right. We're conveying great education here in a way that keeps them engaged with us so that not only do they get it, but then we get invited back so that we can market other agents using education-based marketing strategies. That's right. Um, and and that's sort of scaring your client and killing your deal. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's funny stuff. It's true. It's true, but it's put, up, put out in a way that's entertaining um, and, and captivating. So. Um, so that's just a little sample. This, this is about a 30-slide presentation. I'm not going to go through all that, but just so you get the gist of it, I wanted to share that. So this is kind of the stuff that you'll be walking away with uh, when you leave the workshop. Um, the last slide on that one is uh, we know that you need to close every deal. We are committed to helping you get to the closing table by carefully informing and never scaring your client. We are informist, not alarmist. That's right. Uh, we will not kill your deal and always go out of our way and say good things about you and the home. When was the last time you had a home inspector actually put something in the report that was positive about the home? Yeah, it doesn't happen. Something. It happens with our clients, but it doesn't happen with other home inspectors. Or say something positive about the agent. Um, you know, they're the one that gave you the referral. It sure doesn't hurt to return the favor by saying, you know, you really got an awesome real estate agent here. Or you're in good hands with Sally Sells a lot. Um, that goes a long way. <laughs> Sally sells a lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> um, so throughout that uh, workshop, we'll cover a lot more. We're just touching, you know, scratching the surface here. But um, some other key things, how to read the audience. Uh, Ken touched on it there a second ago. You know, you walk in and the agents are kicked back with their feet out and got their arms crossed in front of their chest. Um, they're, they're dreading what's coming up. Um, so you need to break through those barriers. Um, keep that presentation entertaining. We talked about that. There's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, providing props and handouts. We always um, we always give the handouts, and I have like three slides on a sheet, and then uh, lines off to the side of each slide so they can take notes of what's going on. And then um, providing props. We just did one recently on um, the corrugated stainless steel tubing gas line, which is a, which is a big, uh, big deal, safety hazard. And we just bring a piece of that in there and pass it around. Uh, we use petri dishes with mold in them before. Just anything to get hands on. Um, let's see what else we got. The right dress code. I can't say enough about this. Um, you know, you have to dress for the crowd that you are presenting to. Um, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to go into an upper scale real estate office where it's all suit and tie, and you show up in you know short shorts, flip flops, and a t-shirt. Um, you've got. You've got to. To be successful, you need to dress successful and match the crowd that you are presenting to. And I see a lot where inspectors just show up in their uniforms, and that's not necessarily what she's. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to appear to be an inspector. You want to be a businessman. Right. Uh, so that's very important to be on the same level they are, and your dress says a lot about that. Themed events again. That's our favorite. We're going to be doing three of those uh, while we're down there and having a big time with it. Um, this is probably where we get our biggest bang for our buck on doing these presentations or when they're themed. Um, and then budgeting, you know, you can't just go out there and spend all kinds of money. We need to know if we're presenting for a certain office. Um, now, if you're trying to get in there and dig deeper, maybe you'd spend a little more to make that happen. But if you, you know, you just need to watch what you're spending to make sure it makes sense for what you're getting back out of that office. 
that's where the tracking on your uh, return on investment comes from. Anytime we do one of these presentations or events, we um, pass out material that will allow us to track um, the income that comes from us doing that. And we're going to share that with you as well. And then I uh, touched on it earlier again, but uh, partnering with preferred vendors. We just did, uh, we just did one kids touched on it for a, a construction company. And they had two phases, a subdivision, the right side and the left side. The right side was phase one. Uh, they got that done and we did the grand opening for them. And then this year when they finished up the left side, uh, phase two, we were asked to come do a grand opening for that. And so we did. And we served, gosh, probably 200 hot dogs and hamburgers and drinks to go with it. Didn't cost me a dime. I had my termite uh, vendor who works with us real closely pay for the food. I showed up, cooked it, passed it out, had a great time. Um, so we'll show you how to leverage leverage that as well. You know, William, I think the best compliment that ever got uh, paid me by one of the real estate brokers, a uh, lady asked me, Ken, are you a comedian or a home inspector? And I said, girlfriend, I'm some of both. Yeah. Because I hate boring. You know, let, let's make this fun. Let's make it entertaining, memorable. Uh, that's what people like. All your competitors are going to be boring. So guess that's what? Right. You show up, you're a breath of fresh air. So when that's you come right. to the workshop, you're going to get these skills. Um, you'll learn, and I, I'm irreverent. You know, there is no topic I won't bust on. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I just don't think you have to be boring. And when you get these skill sets, you combine that with your natural winning personality, uh, guess what happens? You'll be as good at this as William and I are. Um, so, I mean, I, I, this is one of my, I know that this is not getting your business ready for 2015, and that's, you know, so intense. This is um, really gaining some great information and having some fun at it as well. Right. The right. mock events ought to be fun. They're going to be a good time. <laughs> Sherry's, already, Sherry's already packing stuff up. So. <laughs> Sherry Troutman, Coach Sherry Troutman is one of the best at this. She, she thinks outside the box, and, uh, and she comes yeah. up with some of the greatest ideas. I, I just get a chuckle. Yeah. I said, she's out Ken to Ken. <laughs> she's on it. She is on it. She is on it. Well, William, let me just share with you the dates. Uh, everybody on the call, um, it's October 23rd through the 25th. You'll come in on the 22nd. Uh, we always have a reception uh, under the big top where you can network because we really didn't even touch on that. And let's let's talk about that a minute. We're going to give you uh, all these hours. We're not workshop eight hours a day, so you're going to get 24 hours of great education. But what happens after we? What do you, and what do you think about it? You know, I think, and you can ask anybody that's been um, after the after the event, the the networking that goes on under the big top. Um, it's just phenomenal. I learned so much stuff. I mean, we're down there teaching, and, and, and we walk home, you know, with a lot of education gained from just uh, maybe maybe somebody's implemented the same thing you have, but in their area, it had to be done differently, and you just learn other tactics. And um, I just can't say enough. And I don't think any other inspector would uh, would uh, deflate the value of the networking that goes on after the event. Tons of information during the show. Um, you know, write as fast as you can, try to keep up, but it's kind of the same thing under the, under the big top. It is. And I will tell you, here's how it works. The hotel gives you breakfast every morning. Uh, our caterers do the lunch here at the training center. It's included in your ticket price. You don't have to go anywhere for lunch. Um, then what happens is we knock off around 5 o'clock. Um, and what we encourage everybody to do is go to dinner. Uh, Little Jasper has six or seven restaurants. They're all inexpensively priced. And we encourage you to go to dinner with a different group each evening. Come back 6 or 6.30. Uh, uh, the bar is open in the big top. Uh, all the drinks are on William and I. Um, and so what happens is let William and I buy you a beverage. Um, and you network until 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock at night with other people. Now, you can call it quits anytime you want. But you'd be surprised at how many things you learn at 9.30. Um, everybody's got a beverage or two and you know nobody's afraid to share and you're just meeting different people and you're thinking wow this is awesome every time we get reviews back which is every time we do an event um, they always like with the stage but they always say hey the, the we call it the big top being under the big top uh, is a killer thing as a matter of fact this time one of them said can the big top open at three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> I'm like I'm not sure we want that yet but um, it is a big time it is a big time so fly in on the 22nd uh, of October the event starts on the 23rd I'd encourage you to stay Saturday night too the big top is open Wednesday through Saturday uh, go home on Sunday uh, make that your travel day uh, because we will go right to five o'clock on Saturday and I just don't want you to miss that education you pay right. for it um, don't don't cut yourself short 
right. And, you know, I hear people say all the time, you, you go to these events where you've got other, you know, your inspection forum groups or your local association or whatever, and, and these inspectors meet up, and everybody just clams up, scared to death to share anything. That is not what happens under the big top. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. You know, and what you'll find is going to dinner with people and interacting here at the breaks and lunch at the uh, training center, uh, people will share it with you, too. It, you know, um, if you come with a, a sharing attitude, I'm going to share the things that worked well for me, uh, you, a giver's game. So what happens is you share something, everybody's sharing their stuff with you, um, and you will really dig it. You, uh, it's, it's a rich education. Uh, the networking is fabulous. You know, uh, William, you know this because you've been there forever, but we have um, clients that have come to every uh, event we've done, and, they, and, and they've met other people there, and they vacation together. Um, you know, so they, they, it's, it's really build strong relationships. When you leave, you'll have other people's phone numbers. You see a problem you're having, call them and talk to them about what have they felt like or experienced. Uh, what did they do when they encountered this situation? So you build a ton of relationships from across the country. We generally have people from uh, all over the U.S. and Canada. This last time, we had 13 people from Texas. So, right. you know, we had them from New York, we had them from California, all over. So it won't be people in your local market gen generally, um, so you can build some great relationships. Right. And the hotel's really nice and very, very affordable. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, everybody so. there's really nice and it is affordable. Okay, right. William, anything else that you want to share with us today? This is awesome. Nope, we're excited and uh, putting the final touches on the, the presentation and looking forward to making the trip. Okay, folks, well, listen. Come join us and everybody else to learn how to get more business from real estate agents. I know that you'll be glad you did.